So why don't we start with, well, the bad looks. There are some bad looks. And then there are some awful looks. And then there's whatever the hell is going on with the Buccaneers. Yes, I'm starting there. There are some bad, bad looks there. And I'm not talking about Tom Brady's Kevin Bacon face. I'm 45 years old, man. There's a lot of going on. No, I'm talking about that concrete curb sando they ate in Carolina yesterday. Well, and Bacon 45's face as well. But mostly the 21-3 beatdown in Charlotte. They, that offense, a Tom Brady offense, put up three points against the woebegone Panthers who've given up on the year already. This was supposed to be the ultimate get-right game. Panthers just bleep-canned their head coach. They shipped off their best player. They were throwing out a quarterback to face down the GOAT who had only made three previous career starts. I mean, look at these guys. I don't care what they say. They had flat out given up on their season. And the only remaining question was who else they might offer up in their fire sale and how high a draft pick they could tank themselves into. I don't want to hear about we haven't given up, we have pride, we're trying every week, because everything you're doing would illustrate just the opposite. Yet somehow the Bucs didn't get that memo. Somehow the Bucs took the ultimate get-right game and used it to get all wrong, to set their own house on fire, to take a big dump in their pants. You have a big dump in your pants. And this thing went off the rails nearly as soon as they took the field. With 90 seconds in, Mike Evans had the drop of the year in what should have been the easiest walk-in touchdown of the year. I don't know that I've ever seen a drop that egregious. I mean, that was terrible. For a team that had to have it, that was egregious. Like that old man put it right on that cat's numbers, hit that guy in stride, and Evans booted it, literally. And come to find out, that was their best offensive player the entire day. Like, I'm not going to say that this actually happened, but it sure felt like as soon as that went down, they all shut it down for the rest of the day. Like, none of them wanted to be there after that happened. Like, they know how crappy they are offensively and that that was going to be their only really good chance to house one, even against a really bad team. And Evans just dropped one of the easiest plays that he or any receiver are ever going to see. And especially this year for that team, because that offense is all jacked up. And by the way, if they all did think that, that that was going to be their best opportunity all day, they were right. Because they didn't do jack the rest of the day against one of the worst teams in the NFL who had already given up on the season. But there is plenty of blame to go around. Plenty of blame to go around. I, I don't have enough time to spread all the blame around with the Bucks, Except Evan says, you know what? Go ahead. Start with me. Start with me. I know I'm the one and my drop that sucked the life out of everybody on that team and probably on both sides of the ball. It was that bad of a drop and I own it. I mean, that's how bad that was. He, he said it took me a while to get my head back in the game. And like he said, they're taught from play one. They're taught from day one as young football players. Next play, next play, next play, next play. Doesn't matter. Next play, next play. That guy straight up as an NFL or any good NFL has said, yeah, it took me a long time to get myself right. And by the way, Mike, I would argue it took the rest of your teammates a long time to get right too because nobody was the same after that drop because that was one of the worst drops ever. In a get right game with an old man quarterback who, by the way, is not what he used to be or close to it. And I'm not putting it all on him, but don't tell me it's got nothing to do with him. Do not tell me it's his line. It's his wide receivers. It's the fact that they can't run it. Yeah, that's all true. And it's him. He clearly is not the same player that he was even last year. So it's hard to argue what Evans said, but it's more than just Evans. However, from that point forward, that game was a complete ass beating. And the most surprising and bizarre ass beating of the year. Even Bacon's 45's face thinks that loss is hideous and shocking and can't believe it and doesn't know what happened and wants things to go back to the way it used to be. His face. 
they were rock bottom, or they better hope it's rock bottom. But I got to tell you, things are not much better in Green Bay. Not much better in Green Bay because the Packers also had a game this week against an organization in turmoil, against a backup quarterback as well. And again, they needed a a get-right game. And that was a get-right game that was gift-wrapped by the schedule maker. That's right. And what did the Packers do? The same thing the Bucks did. They took an enormous dump in their pants. Yeah, a big dump in your pants. Not as enormous a dump in their pants, but a dump in the pants nonetheless. Yeah, a big dump in your pants. I mean, I'll give the Packers this. They didn't get their asses absolutely handed to them. They actually were still in that game late. But it should have never been a game late if we are to believe they are who they think they are. But when it came right down to it, the grittiest quarterback play of the game came on the biggest play of the game, and it was not Aaron Rodgers who made it. It was Taylor Heineke. That third down conversion was one more. This is amazing. That third down conversion was one more than the Packers had the entire game because they had none. For the first time in Aaron Rodgers' entire Hall of Fame career, he did not convert a single third down yesterday, which gave Heineke and McLaurin a chance to stick the dagger in. The same Terry McLaurin that was drafted one pick after the Packers took tight end Jace Sternberger in the third round three years ago. Remember that? The same Jace Sternberger, who is now out of the NFL, and tweeted this during the game yesterday. Incredible tweet. Quote, I can't believe the Packers didn't draft McLaurin. End of quote. That... All the credit in the world to you, big dog. That is an all-time tweet right there. The Packers are even getting clowned by dudes that they drafted for not drafting somebody else to fix the exact problem they have right now. But unlike the doom and gloom in Tampa, Aaron is staying optimistic. Now, he didn't go full R-E-L-A-X mode after the game yesterday, but he did go Walter White instead. When asked... If it still seems plausible to him that the Packers could make a run, well, get in and then make a run. My man, and you are my man, it might be the worst thing ever. (laughs) Have you seen what you guys have done the last two weeks? And now you're going to Orchard Park. And they had a bye, and they're lying in wait. Yeah, I don't know if that's the best thing for you. I understand why you're saying that, Aaron. It's right for you to say that. But I think when you say, if what you mean by the best thing for you is the worst thing for you, I would tend to say that's how that is. I mean, don't get me wrong. You don't count out a first ballot Hall of Famer. You don't count out a guy who won the last two MVPs. You don't count out a guy who's bounced back from slow starts before over and over and over again. You know, I would never give up on this guy. However, he... And Bacon 45, frankly, just do not look like the guys that they look like even last year. They just don't. So neither he nor his team look anything like they have the last couple of years when he was ripping the MVP hardware and they were competing for the Lombardi. And yes, it's even worse in Tampa where apparently Bacon 45's personal football life, or I should say his football life, is as jacked up as his personal life. And as jacked up as his personal face. Let me repeat that. Bacon 45's football life is as jacked up as his personal life and as jacked up as his personal face. Right in my face. You know, everybody was quick to point out, you came back for this? Right. You came back for this. So now your personal life is jacked up. Your football life is jacked up. Your face is jacked up. Now what? And while here's the amazing thing. While things are falling apart In the two towns and two communities and two organizations that were projected to be in the mix, Tampa and Green Bay, in all places, of all places, they're coming together in New York City because suddenly neither the Giants nor the Jets can lose. Tampa Bay and Green Bay can't win, but the Giants and Jets can't lose. This is why the Shield is so messed up right now. Messed up in the sense that nobody has any idea what's going on. Anybody who tells you they know exactly what's going on in the NFL is lying to your face. Because I would even allege that nobody knows anything about what's going on. Why? Why would I say that? Because the G-Men are 6-1. and one. 
That's why I would say that. Because the Jets have won four straight. That's why I would say that. Both teams pushed to the last play yesterday, and both teams came through yet again. In years past, both of these joke franchises would find ways to lose. Neither of these teams would ever win those respective games in recent years. But apparently that was then, and this is now, because now they find ways to win. Now they find ways to finish. Now they find ways to avoid the proverbial New York dump in the pants. Yeah, big dump in your pants. It's like they've bequeathed that to Tampa Bay and Green Bay. Like there's a freaking culture change going on in both of those organizations they're no longer laughing stocks they're no longer punching bags they're no longer ass clowns they're no longer something that the locals should be ashamed of i'm not saying that we will see either one of them in glendale at the end of the year but i am saying the fans can walk around with their chests out a little bit The fans can collect some receipts. The fans no longer have to walk around with bags over their heads because they're not coached by bags. And by the way, I did warn everyone last week that the G-men should never have been an underdog in Jacksonville this week. Another dub for the walking one-man rebuild, Brian Dable. I have no idea how the hell these guys are 6-1, and frankly. I mean, you can point to their schedule. You can say that they're the worst 6-1 and one team ever. But the fact is, they're freaking 6-1. and one. The Giants are 6-1. and one. It's incredible. Meantime, Robert Receipts. Taking receipts. Also getting it done. When Brett Rippon's desperation heave got lost in all that sauce. Yeah, man, the sauce is electric. You sure you want to try the sauce? You know what happens when you try the sauce? You get lost in the sauce. It's one of my favorite sayings. I love getting lost in the sauce. And by the way, I've been lost in the sauce. I've gotten lost in the sauce in this opening segment. The Jets are balling the hell out. They are. The New York football teams are balling the hell out. Tom Brady looks like Kevin Bacon. How about this? He and Aaron Rodgers arguably, not even arguably, were outplayed yesterday by P.J. Walker and Taylor Heineke. P.J. Walker and Taylor Heineke beat Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. So nothing makes sense in the NFL right now. Down is up, black is white, nothing makes sense. 